Whoa. She looks like a little donkey. Yeah. She does look like a donkey. <laughs> Faye was the cutest little doling born on our farm earlier this year, but pretty soon we realized she had both doling and buckling parts, making her a hermaphrodite, and the first ever actually on our farm. And after a lot of debate, we finally decided what Faye's future will be. Hand her to dad. Oh, she's big. <laughs> she heady. There you go. Whoa. Let's see how she does with these girls. Well, <laughs> they have to they have to figure out who's the yeah. best. Bring Blair over too. <laughs> she's so funny. Whoa. She looks like a little donkey. Yeah. She does look like a donkey. <laughs> Maybe she's part donkey too. Yeah. All right, so now we have to decide what the future of Faye is going to be. So originally we said that we thought Faye would do well in a situation where she was a buck buddy, buddy to a little buck. But we since discovered that that's not as fun for her. Uh, we put her with Finnick for a little bit and he kind of bugged her too much. She didn't like it. So we decided she's gonna do a lot better as a buddy to a herd of does. So she's gonna go as a pet to a new farm as a doe buddy, not a buck buddy. And now that all these three little girls, three little shaved girls, are older, they can have Faye in here and they won't be too bothered. They're gonna work out their little differences first. She has teeth, but they're just like super tiny. That is so funny. That's, yeah. Prim is really dominant, so I figured that they would have a little tussle here. Yeah, Prim is. <laughs> Dolly. <laughs> they're sure hitting hard. Look at this. All three. They're, they're it's like, pretty oh. tough. It's pretty tough. It hits you really hard, but then just hug you. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yeah, she's going to go fight little Reba over there. She's a lot bigger, isn't she? Like she taller. is. She's always been a lot bigger, hasn't she? <laughs> A few of you mentioned to watch out for cancer when testicles are retained in the abdomen or testicles that haven't dropped. But I asked our vet and it's not really um, something that happens with goats. So the new owner can decide to either neuter her, spay her, or keep her as is. Reba's the only one that doesn't fight because she's so sweet. <laughs> she's so sweet. And she, she has so really sweet. pretty color. Oh. And I really like her. Oh, now you want attention, is that it? Oh, Blair's sweet too. Yeah. Meanwhile, these two over here are just having it out. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, first up is Daphne. The loudest, the loudest one. <laughs> the loudest one gets to be milked. One of the downsides of taking goats to shows is that their milk goes down. So everybody's milk is low. We're trying to boost it back up with different herbs and stuff. So everybody's low today, but that's that's what happens when you go to shows. Everybody waits patiently and then they all bully Raven over there because they don't think that she should get to come in here. Olive is next, and then Tatum, and then wherever Hazel is. All right, bye Daphne. Olive's a good goat. She is so sweet. She's the easiest one to milk. Comes up here on her own. I know, doesn't make a peep. She's perfect. Next up is Hazel. She's like, Second to best. She's good behavior wise, but milking she's old. Yeah, she's kind of hard to milk. <laughs> they know who has the treats. 
thing with bottle fed babies is they're very impatient. They are. They go crazy. Even though they're, you know, already eating lots of hay and a little bit of grain, they're just, they're, they go crazy for the bottles. Oh, man. Here she comes. Here she comes. I think so. I'm gonna... Boom. <laughs> I'm gonna nurse her. It's so funny because Prim really doesn't understand how to drink the bottle from that way. We've tried. Oh, she has to come, she under, has to come under the arm. Under the arm. Now she's inside my shirt. <laughs> there we go. And then she's good. Then she'll drink. Just in time for the next one to be milked. Which is? Salem, apparently. Tatum. Tatum. All right, little Tatum's udder is really tiny. So you would think, you know, you would stop milking a goat like this. You're like, ah, she doesn't produce that much. But did you know that however long you milk in that first lactation helps sort of set the stage for the subsequent lactation. So it's really important as small of a amount that she makes that we keep going and make sure that her body is told to keep producing. So hopefully it'll give her the best chance for next year to produce really well and um, hopefully her genetics gives her a big enough udder. I think it will, so we'll see. I guess we can't give milk to the chicks. Oh, it got stuck in there. Oh, oh, it's gonna drown. There you go, sorry, you're covered in milk. So far, the co-parenting is going well. <laughs> they are, they're both totally taking care of them. It's so funny. Look at that little one under a wing. Look at that one right there. I think that one is a mama's boy, <laughs> a mama's chick. That is so funny. She has another one. We give any extra milk to the chickens. Chickens look, oh, there's the one under, that was the wet one. Oh, that's the milk chick. Oh, we should go wa wash it off and then bring it back. Yeah, because it's going to be sticky. You know, just a little bath. I'm just dunking him. Okay, we'll clean oh, that up. Oh, he's so cold though. Okay, go put him back under his mama. Here you go. No mama. more milk, no more sticky milk. <laughs> mama will keep you warm. So I think we've got four Little black ones and five, yeah, and five little yellow chicks. So I think we're good. And the two mamas. <laughs> so funny to me that they're both taking care of them. Okay, Luna, I have something that I know you'll like. <laughs> there you go. She has not been liking any treats lately. She just wants the grass. So these are little grass pellets here. They have a little bit of molasses in them, so I figured she would eat these. There you go. See, those taste good. Poor Luna, getting old, aren't ya? Here, more treats. She still eats, you know, hay and everything, but she's just not, not as into the treats lately. You're still really pretty. I'm so excited about today's farm to table dish. In our jungle of a garden, we have our tomatoes that are starting to get ripe. And it's always so exciting the first time it happens. Look at all these beautiful tomatoes. And one pepper. So in my search for the first thing to make with our tomatoes, I came across something called a tomato pie. And while that looked really good, I decided, you know what, my family is probably more likely to eat a quiche with these fresh tomatoes in there. So that's what we're making today. We're going to start with a simple pie crust, and the thing that I realized after years of making pie crusts is you have to really go light on the liquid. You pour it on the counter and it looks a mess, it looks like it's never going to come together, but somehow it does, and it rolls out into the perfect pie crust. There are two types of people in this world, those who make pretty pie crusts and those who go rustic, and you, know, you can probably guess which type of person I am. The most important part of making a quiche is to make sure that you have a good milk to egg ratio. So we're going with about four to five eggs for every cup of milk. We'll add a little bit of salt and pepper and set that aside as we get all of the toppings. 
I mean, look at that gorgeous fresh tomato. It's, oh. We'll also dice up this little red pepper and then get started on filling the quiches. We'll start with a little bit of cheese at the bottom. This helps create sort of a protective layer so that the crust doesn't get too soaked. Then we'll add the diced peppers, a little bit of spinach, some turkey sausage, and those beautiful, ripe, fresh tomatoes. A lot of them. And then I'll add a little bit more. Finally, we'll pour over the egg mixture and bake for about 45 minutes. And boom, that's it. My crust got a little bit brown, but it was still amazing. A perfect first dish as we enter a summer of fresh garden tomatoes. Since Salem is almost full grown, she's ready to take over the guard position from the geese. So here's the backstory on our two geese, Esme and Carlisle. We got them a couple of years ago to be good guard geese and make an alarm for us whenever a coyote or a predator comes in our backyard. And they've done a really good job of that. So they were in the pasture and being great guard geese and they were pecking our goats a little too much and hurting them. And so we had to have them somewhere else and we put them over in the buck enclosure. And there they could still be an alarm and still uh, alert us of whenever anything's going on in the backyard. Now our farm dog Salem is grown up and big enough to defend our backyard. So we've got water over here for them and they're swimming in the irrigation all the time. They try to have some babies but they haven't been able to fertilize the eggs or anything the geese been back here and they're still not getting along too well with the bucks so carlisle and esme are going to go live at our friend's house to have some other geese hopefully they'll be able to mature more and and have some babies over there where, where they feel more comfortable we'll say goodbye to carlisle and esme He does it. Yeah, look at that. Yay! Good job. That's so cool. Look at him. There he goes. Good job. That's so just, cool. He's happy to be up there. Just have to make sure he doesn't poop on you. Yeah, he hasn't pooped yet. That I know of. <laughs> yeah, he's right on. Turn this way so I can see him. There he is. Look it, you yeah. did it. It only took you a few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's pretty comfortable. Yeah. He doesn't try to freak out. He can very well just fly down. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Good job. You're a good little pigeon, aren't you? He's big, dude. He's a big, big boy. Not sure what to name him. I know we have Dusk, but I'm not incredibly fond of the name. Maybe you should think of a so name from Elden I Ring. Think of one that I've <laughs> Godric. Godric. So still haven't found him a girlfriend, but not quite yet. Yeah. Now since you're going away to college, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Might have to get him one. A cool pink pet. Careful, they're always, they're a little bit clumsy, you know? Bit, yeah, mainly because it's not a flat surface. Come up here. A little bit better, there you go. <laughs> Good job, that's yeah. so cool. Okay, time to go eat your food. Cat's over there watching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, job. there you go. Good job. Yeah, he can very well fly, just uh, <laughs> yeah, he gets in his food. He doesn't poop in it though. He's really good about that. Fine. He only poops on the stool that I'm supposed to sit on. Oh, nice. Nice. Maybe I should just try bringing him inside soon. She just wants to play. She just wants to play with the pigeon. Yeah. 
He's not really afraid of any of the cats or Salem or anyone that comes by. She's all brushed out now, but yeah. um, she just looks scraggly because there's like bits that came off. But look, it's all nice and smooth. Just lost some chunks. <laughs> yeah. You're good. You're not scared anymore. Isn't that amazing? She loves Lydia the best though. She doesn't love me quite as much. All right, we have an update on Kiwi and Gertie. We let the chicks out and it looks like they've split up. There's three black chicks over here with Kiwi and then there's four yellow chickens and one black chicken over here with Gertie. So it looks like they've chosen sides. Is this permanent, Ethan? I don't know, I've seen them change sides a couple times. Maybe they keep going back and forth, can't make a decision. In time, we will see which mother they choose. All right, guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. I'm sorry we weren't here last week. I got a really bad stomach bug. It was really fun, but I'm better now. I'm better now. So now we're back to regular filming. We're really excited because we've got like one last fun summer before Ethan heads up to college. So hopefully we can take a few little trips together and you guys can join us if you want to join us. I mean, not physically, but in the meantime, it's going to be all about raising up these dolings and our new little buckling finnick and getting everybody ready for breeding season in the fall. In the meantime, if you want to watch the video where Faye was born, go ahead and click right here.